Welcome to the scheduling system for the Capital University Music Technology Facilities. You'll want to go to studios.capital.edu. Uh, this can both be on a desktop PC or on your mobile device. Uh, when you first go to this page, you'll want to create a login. A user, you'll go to register. And you'll be presented with some information. Of course, you'll want to create a username, a password, uh, your first and last name, email. Um, you'll also want to write down the position. And for you, it will be student with a capital S. Of course, put in the security code and register yourself. Um, this uh, username and password is uh, only accessible to you. Uh, none of the administrators can see the password. Um, if you lose the password, you can reset it. Um, so you will uh, be certain that it will be secure. Um, I already have a username and password created. It is just simply student. And I will log in. And now I'm in to the actual scheduling system. Once you're logged into the system, you will be first greeted with an announcement. Make sure you keep an eye on these. Uh, but this particular announcement will stay here to showcase that there are two different types of bookings that you can create in our systems. Uh, you can create a personal studio time booking or sessions booking. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you both methods. Um, this particular page that you're looking at is called the dashboard. Um, not a whole lot of useful information here except for the announcements. Down here, you can see the available spaces that we have, uh, the CMC production suites, the conservatory production suites, Studio A, Studio E, and Studio F. And there might be more additions as we uh, move forward. Uh, you can reserve from this page, but I suggest that you use a different page. Instead, we will use the option of scheduling from the resource calendar. So we'll go ahead and choose that. When you go to the resource calendar page, you'll be presented with, of course, a calendar uh, that you can move through the various months of the year. Um, you will also be presented with all of the reservations that are currently in place. And that is because of this change calendar, calendar option. Uh, under all reservations, you of course see all spaces and all reservations. You can see that the test student here, if I hover over this particular item, that uh, this student is, has uh, the eComp personal studio time reserved um, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. on that Wednesday. You can see down here that Robert has a Studio F session booked from 1 to 5 p.m. Um, it's important that you also know that if you click on all reservations, you can scroll down here and look at just particular rooms. So if we just wanted to look at Studio F's sessions, we can see here that uh, nothing is booked other than uh, Robert Sessions down here. Um, if we were to go to, for example, uh, the eComp room, you can see that just the student, so uh, test student has that reserve for that particular day and time. So changing calendar and changing the submenu is really important. Uh, again, all reservations show you uh, all of the reservations, but eventually you will have to change um, which calendar you are looking at when you go to make your first reservation. To create a personal studio time reservation, you'll first want to go to the Change Calendar submenu, and you'll want to choose uh, the space that you want to work in. Um, so you can see all the various spaces here. They're labeled as personal studio time. Of course, we wouldn't want to choose the, the sessions option. Uh, so let's say we want to work in the CMC production suite, and we want to work in suite number one. <clears throat> so when I choose that option, we see that calendar. We actually see that no one has booked anything for this month yet. But let's say we want to work in the CMC Suite 1 tomorrow. So you simply click in the uh, Thursday the 5th, Create Reservation. 
and then you'll get the reservation page. And here then you wanna choose the time that you wanna work. So let's say I wanna start bright and early at 9 a.m. And the thing to note about personal studio time is that you have a maximum of three hours that you're able to book. So let's say I mistakenly book from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. and hit create. I'm gonna get this um, error that says this reservation cannot last longer than three hours. So you'll have to change it. So you can book anywhere from one hour to three hours. So let's say I wanna utilize my entire time. Uh, we book nine to 12. Now you certainly can put a title of reservation if you want or description. It's not necessary when you're doing personal studio time. When you book it, your name will come up as um, reserving that particular time. Um, you can set a reminder. We'll talk about uh, setting email preferences a little bit later, but that's very nice that you can have it remind you a certain amount of time before the session. Uh, the important thing to note about personal studio time is that once you create this, um, there's a check-in policy. So I can create this particular reservation. It was created. Now you will see it locate here. Um, if I go back to, well, we can see all reservations. You can see that tomorrow we created this. So when I click here, um, you are gonna have to actually check in. Um, you can only check in uh, up to five minutes before your personal studio time actually starts. But once your personal studio time starts, you need to come back to your reservation on this page and check in. You'll see a check in option here. Um, that check in option uh, will go away after 30 minutes and your reservation will be canceled. So if you made a reservation and you uh, didn't show up, the reservation automatically cancels after 30 minutes, making it available for other students um, to, uh, to, to reserve that space. Making a session reservation is just a little bit more complex uh, than personal studio time simply because the studios are only available at particular times on particular days. So currently sessions are available on Tuesday evenings, Thursday evenings, Friday evenings, and then all day Saturday and all day Sunday. So to make a session reservation, you'll go to the change calendar submenu and choose the studio where you'd like to work. So let's say, for example, we wanna make a session for Studio A. So then we get to see that calendar. We can see that no sessions were made. I guess actually the uh, test student session down here. Um, but let's say we wanna make a session for Thursday. So we would choose Create Reservation. And when we get to the new reservation page, when you go to choose the time, what you will see here is down at the bottom, a 5.30 session and a 9.30 session. So recording sessions can happen in four hour time blocks. You can only book a four hour recording session. So we would choose, let's say the 5.30 session. So that's the start time. And then the end time, we would need to choose the same thing, the 5.30 session. And what you will see here is the reservation length is four hours. And so when we make that reservation, we won't get any errors. And the same thing would happen if you went to the 9.30 session, you would have to choose 9.30 over here. Now, the difference between the 9.30 session and the other sessions is that you will see that it says the reservation length is only two hours and 29 minutes. It is in fact a four hour session starting at 9.30 p.m. It goes till 1.30 a.m. Uh, this scheduling system doesn't allow us to book over the, the midnight hour. So that's why it says two hours and 25 minutes because it actually officially only goes to 11.59. Um, but rest assured, your session is a four-hour session if you book for the 9.30 p.m. session. Now, when you create a session reservation, would like you to title the reservation. Um, would like you to put in, um, you know, what the project is, whether this is a, uh, you know, a Studio A, uh, maybe it is a, a 312G class project, you know, something along those lines, just so there's a reservation, uh, some information about that. Again, you can set a reminder to, to have it remind you uh, via email. Now, for session reservations, these have to be approved. So when you hit create, it will say that your session is reserved, but it's pending approval. So your reservation was successfully created. Now that will automatically send an email to the administrators and then they will go in and 
If everything lines up and we're good to go, they will approve your session and you'll actually receive, you'll receive an email that says your session has been approved. So it's a great system um, for session reservations. But you can see that the session does show up on the calendar um, for 9.30 p.m. so other students wouldn't be able to, to book over that. Now, if we go to studio, or uh, um, let's say we go to studio E sessions, on a Saturday, <clears throat> create session or create reservation, you will see that the times, um, there's only, there's four uh, available session uh, uh, time slots for Saturday. So the 9 a.m., 1 p.m., and then 5.30 and 9.30. So that's the way uh, sessions work. And sessions do require you to check in, just like personal studio time. So once you arrive to your session, you must come to this uh, scheduling uh, application and uh, check in uh, that you are there. And if you don't check in, your reservation is automatically deleted after 30 minutes. So make sure that you check in so that way others know that the studio is in use uh, and that it can't be booked at that particular time. Although the resource calendar might be the easiest way to, to both view and book your reservations, I did want to show you some of the other options for viewing uh, the schedule. You can go to the schedule menu and choose bookings. And this is just a little bit of a, a different way of viewing the schedules. Uh, you can see here a little bit more information to look at. You have to go to the very top and choose which resource you want to look in. Uh, so for example, let's say we want to look at the Studio E options. When you go to the Studio E option, you see both the Studio E personal studio time options and the, the Studio E session options. Uh, and then let's say we want to uh, book some personal studio time for Studio E starting at, at 2 p.m. on Friday. Uh, you simply click in that box. Uh, then when you get to the new reservation, like we've seen before, you choose uh, the 2 p.m. start time till, let's say, 4 p.m., and then you would create that reservation. So it's just another way uh, of actually um, booking your reservation. Uh, another nice option is to go to My Calendar. My Calendar lets you see just your reservations. Uh, you can go in and create reservations from this page, but you cannot see all the other reservation options that, that uh, or all the other reservations that have been made in the spaces. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but you can go in and see just your reservations. And finally, you can choose Find a Time. Again, it's a little bit more difficult um, because you actually have to provide all the information. Um, so you could say uh, not necessarily any resource, but you wanted to look for or uh, you can scroll down in this menu, um, what times are available in the e-comp room um, tomorrow or a date range or sometime this week um, for uh, a certain amount of time. So let's say for, um, for two hours. Um, and then you choose find a time and it would go through and then tell you all of the available times uh, that are available and you can click and then get to um, the, the new reservation time. So you can see uh, just that it's a different way to actually reserve the space. Again, a little bit more information um, than you might care to see. So that's why I, I think that the uh, resource calendar might be the best way to make those reservations. Setting email preferences is a great way just to be updated on any changes that might have happened to reservations. Or, you know, if you make a uh, session reservation, uh, receiving an email when that uh, session gets approved by an administrator. Um, so there are a couple different options for, for emails that you can set. And I just wanted to point out, first of all, when you initially create that reservation, um, that you have the option to have it set or send a reminder to you. Uh, you can send that reminder uh, minutes beforehand, hours, days, uh, so that way you, you make sure uh, that you get to your session or your personal studio time that you booked. Uh, other options are going to be under the My Account menu. Uh, profile shows you just all the information that you uh, created when you set up your registration, uh, change password if needed. But notification preferences is where you'll then set up uh, email preferences. 
So you get four different options here. When I create a reservation or a reservation is created on my behalf, you can choose to have it send you an email. So I suggest that you choose this option on um, just so it's kind of just a verification uh, to your email that the system received your uh, reservation. Uh, just a nice little uh, extra addition there. Uh, when I update a reservation or a reservation is updated on my behalf, uh, you know, maybe you changed your reservation from a two hour session to a three hour session, um, it would send you an email. Or if for some reason an administrator actually had to make a change to your reservation, it would email you that uh, information. When I delete a reservation or a reservation is deleted on my behalf. Um, so of course, when you delete a reservation, it would send you an email. Um, and then probably most importantly is when my pending reservation is approved. Uh, you certainly want to have it set to send me an email so that way when that administrator approves your session, you receive an email that, uh, that specifies that, uh, that information uh, or that, that session has in fact been approved.